Hi everyone, am I audible? I can see a few more people joining in and we'll begin the session very soon. I know you all are excited to meet Bradley today and of course Deeksha ma'am. But let's wait for a few more participants to join before starting. All the best, Diksha. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. All the best. best okay, now I can actually see a lot of people joining in. Hi, everyone. A very good afternoon. How are you all doing? Hey, Abhinav. Hey, Aditya. Hey, Ashwarya. I hope I'm audible. I hope my screen is also audible. Hey, Dhiren. Hey, Preet. Yes, yes. Sujata Mantreet. Great. It's good to see that so many people are here with us. And so are you excited for the session? At least show some excitement in the chat box. It's a very, very special session today. Right? Yes, now I can see the excitement. I can see how pumped up you all are for the session. Great. Yes, even we are also very, very excited to begin. And yes, Raj Lakshmi, you will get to meet Brettley today again. You are feeling overwhelmed. Wow, good to see beautiful responses. And with Bretley, like I know you all know that Bretley is going to join us, but with Bretley, um, who's going to join today? It's a very difficult question, I know, but yes, who's going to take the listening session today along with Bretley? Deeksha Ma'am. Great. Yes, Raj Lakshmi. So Deeksha Mehta Ma'am is also going to join us. And Name is on the slide. Yes, I know Bindu. That's what that's why I said it's a very difficult question. So um, before beginning this session, I'll quickly and quickly introduce Deeksha ma'am to everyone because I can see there are a lot of new participants also. And of course, our old ones. So Deeksha Mehta ma'am is our expert senior IELTS trainer here at Leap Scholar. She has more than 3000 um, hours of teaching experience and she has taught more than 20,000 students till now. I know you all are excited to see her. Some of you already know her. Some of you are already her students, right? Yes, go her. You will be getting chance to ask questions throughout the session. So yes, this session is going to be very very fun because we'll be unmuting a lot of people today and you all will get a chance to interact with Bretley, to interact with Deeksha ma'am to ask your questions but for that we just have one condition and that is you all have to stay with us till the end and I welcome people on YouTube also um, please stay us throughout the session and yes do not forget to like and subscribe to our channel so yes we have Deeksha ma'am here hello ma'am welcome Hello everyone. Hi, good afternoon. How are all of you doing today? Hi, Bindu. Hello, Surendra. Hello, everybody. Hi, Raj Lakshmi. Oh, wow. So nice to see um, familiar faces. Uh, great. A lot of my students are here. Yes, Aunt May. Yes, I recognize that somebody from my batch. Thank you so much, Muskan. All right. How sweet, lovely comments. Are you all excited to meet the cricketing legend? Yes, of course, I remember Muskan. Yes. I'm doing very, very well. How about you? 
soon, uh, very soon, Naima. <laughs> no, it's not my birthday today. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Well, it's not every day that you get to see uh, Sir Bretley, isn't it? So you, I just had to dress up for the occasion. Thank you so much, everyone. Yes. Waiting for, yes, waiting for Bretley to come and steal my thunder. Yes, definitely. He's most welcome to. Thank you so much, all of you. Thank you. Yes, so are you all excited to see Brett Lee? And I have something very special for you in store today. It's going to be a very interesting session. I'm going to be uh, asking some uh, very interesting questions. So yes, uh, listening module, of course, and also the opportunity to speak to him. So everybody, you know, wear your best t-shirts, be ready. Um, comb your hair so that when we unmute you and switch on the video, you can uh, look all pretty, right? Definitely, Manideep, I will try my best to give as many chances to all of you as possible. Yes, the surprise, of course. All right, I just wanted to check uh, with Soumya. Soumya, are we live? Um, yes, ma'am, we are live and Brettley is going to be here super soon. Wow, I cannot wait. I'm <laughs> so excited. How about all of you? Let me see your excitement. I can see your messages, Puneet. Worry not. Uh, working from home, all right. Yes, but you can always get your Zoom t-shirt. Be, be, be ready. We'll be unmuting and, you know, switching on your videos. So you can uh, speak to him and it'll be recorded on YouTube as well. So later on, you can show um, your family members that, hey, I... Uh, you know, had a chance to speak to someone, to, to Brett Lee, of course. Thank you, Manish. Yes. <laughs> All right, Naima. Okay. Uh, what's common in cricket and IELTS? Yes, good question. Why Brett Lee? What's common in cricket and IELTS? Who can answer this question? What is common? English. You need English to clear the IELTS. And you need, so it, the English gave us cricket and also you need good English skills to listen to the co commentary of any international match, isn't it? So yes, you need English for both of these uh, areas. If you don't have it, then well, it's going to be difficult. You won't be able to watch your favorite um, sport. All right, so since there are so many of us uh, here, who are new. So yes, I can recognize that a lot of you are my students, LEAP students, but a lot of us are new. So I want to quickly take a moment to introduce LEAP Scholar to all of you. What do we do at LEAP Scholar? Simple, we provide counseling. We make sure you reach from A to B. Mm, that sounds like an airline, doesn't it? No, here B is your study abroad destination. And how are we special? A lot of, student, a lot of uh, companies do that. You know, they provide counseling, they send people. How is Leap Scholar different from all of those companies? So let me quickly show you how we are different. So we have three really cool things which sets us apart from the other people. First is that we do it in the fastest way pos possible. So super soon. Second is that it's hassle-free. And third is it's the most affordable way possible, most economical way. Studying abroad is expensive, right? We reduce the cost for you. We provide you scholarships and loans. Now let's move to our IELTS division. What do we do at IELTS? The same three things. Again, it is the fastest way to prepare for IELTS. You can do it just with one single click. It's hassle-free. So all you need to do is just click on the link that Soumya has sent in the chat box. That is it, a single click and you've joined our courses. And the most important part, it's the most economical, most affordable way present in India right now. So there's nothing which is lower than our prices. Why? Because it's absolutely free right now. So yes, our courses are going to cost you zero rupees, nothing at all. Just click on the link that Soumya has sent you. The special code for the special masterclass is, any guesses? What's the code for getting the course for free? Quite easy, the code is right in front of you. It's 
Exactly. The name of the superstar itself. So put in the code and you will be able to get it for free, zero rupees, right? So it's absolutely free right now. Exactly. It's Brett Lee, B R E T L E. So just put the code in there. You can get any course, any um, session that you like for absolutely free, zero rupees. Hmm. When is, uh, when is Sir uh, joining us? Yes, good question. Any updates on that, uh, Soumya? All right, great. Uh, yes, uh, that's a very good question. Uh, Atarvala wants to know what about Brett's English? So yes, you know, he is an Australian native speaker, which means uh, he speaks in one of the toughest accents ever. It's quite difficult for us to understand, isn't it? And today we'll be looking at the listening module. So I think it will be very beneficial for all of you if you want to um, go through his, um, you know, get help in understanding the Australian accent. Also, ma'am, um, since we have a lot of people here and we all are eagerly waiting for Bradley. So yes, Bradley, I just got an update and he's going to join us in another two, three minutes. And of course, he he's the legend. And yes, we all have to wait for him. Um, but yes, the session would be worth waiting. So don't worry. And yes, I have a um, till then I have an announcement for everyone. So people who would be staying with us till the end, we have a surprise giveaway gift for everyone. And since you all know, it's the, it's a listening session. In the end of the session, we'll be sharing some listening tips and challenges with everyone. So please stay with us till the end to take your free giveaway gift. Right? Definitely. And we'll be playing a very interesting game with uh, Sir today. Let me show you a sneak peek of the game. All right. We're going to look at the game that we're going to play. Uh, let's understand the rules. Uh, what rules do we have? Uh, it's a very special game. Um, it's called Idioms of the Stadium. Can someone guess what the game is going to be? So, you know, there are prizes to be won at the end. So whoever wins the game, you'll get a prize at the end. So can you guess what do you have to do in the game? What is it about? Uh, very good, Muskan. Absolutely correct. What about the others? Uh, stadium names guessing. Mm, that wouldn't be related to uh, IELTS. It's, it's IELTS, right? I'm going to help you uh, crack it, score better. So... Bingo, no, we already did bingo with Binga once. Uh, very close. A lot of you are very close. Some of you guessed it. Yasmin, excellent. What a beautiful way of describing it. You know, she's put it across in a better way than I could. Perfect. Seema, absolutely correct. Exactly, Maitre. Wonderful. A lot of you figured it out. Now, they are idioms related to sports. We'll be teaching you in fact, so Brettley will be teaching you some idioms related to sports. So what exactly are idioms? Can someone quickly explain what is an idiom? So idiom is something which is a little two-faced. It's like that two-faced aunt that you have who pretends to be someone but actually is someone, isn't it? So how do they behave, aunts? They they're really sweet on your face, but behind your back, they mean something else. So an idiom is the same thing. It says something else, but it means something entirely different. For example, raining cats and dogs. So on its face, it says that cats and dogs are falling from the sky, are they? Does it mean that dogs and cats are falling from the sky? Unfortunately not. That's a, um, that's a scene I would love to see, but it just simply means raining heavily, isn't it? For example, pouring buckets. What does pouring buckets mean? Is somebody pour, uh, throwing buckets from the top? Mm -hmm. Same logic, right? It means that it's raining heavily. So today we are going to learn some idioms that you can use in the IELTS exam but they're going to be related to sports, of course. So I am going to show you some pictures and you need to guess what the idiom is looking at the picture. Sounds easy, difficult? 
Ready? All right. Ready? Easy. Oh, okay, but don't Google. Don't cheat then. That's a typical game. All right. Nice to know you've already played it. Yes. So do you know any sport related idioms um, before we start playing it? Do you know any? Back on track. Very good, Shubham. Yes. So if somebody is, has, um, you know, lost his, um, metaphorically lost his way, not literally, and uh, they are now again on their right path, we could say he or she is back on track. Very good, Shubham. All right. What else? Anybody else? Any more? On cloud nine. Uh, okay. But how is it related to sports? That is correct. Over the moon again, not related to sports. Very good. A uh, ball is in your court. Uh, yes, you can say that. Uh, so ball is related to sports. Ball is in your court. So yes, that you can make the decision. It's in your hands now. Um, Nandini, yes, very close. All right. Over the moon, raining boundaries. Where is Be uh, Bradley? He's a celebrity. Of course, we'll have to wait. Uh, you know, we'll be waiting for him. That's that's the best part. Uh, the, the suspense building and the excitement. I want you to be more excited. All right. So show me the excitement and we'll bring him sooner. Okay. Call it a day. Um, okay. But how is it related to sports? To bounce back. Okay. Yes. Can we can say that bounce is related to sports. Break a leg. Uh, okay. Break a leg is for me. All right. Thank you. On seventh heaven. Okay. The code isn't working. Uh, Nitisha, you need to log in uh, for the code to work. Hit the bullseye. All right, yes, good. That's a good one, Sushant. Hit the bullseye. So uh, when you have exactly scored, you know, the best marks or you, you're accurate, absolutely correct. That is hitting the bullseye. Of course, Nagandeep. What else? A cakewalk, okay. Man of the match is not an idiom. I'm, I'm afraid it isn't. Under the weather, yes, but under the weather is not related to sports. Uh, I've got some really interesting ones for you. Let's see if you can, you know, uh, guess those. Very good. Uh, yes, I will be Karthik. Yes, that's one of my idioms today. Oh, wow, Chiranjeevi has already registered. Chiranjeevi, which teacher did you choose? Whose course are you taking? Hi, Ritika. Go the extra mile. Yes, good. Go the extra mile. Very good. So if you're doing something extra for someone, empathizing with someone and doing something extra, it's going the, uh, going the extra mile. Call it a day. Yes. Okay. Hold your horses. Okay, but how is that related to um, cricket or, or sports? Uh, I'm choosing Mohammed's uh, batch. Yes, you are in for a surprise. You'll have so much sarcasm, you will love it. Yes. Uh, under the table, um, okay, not related to sports, however. A very good to stay ahead of the game. Great to stay ahead of the game. That's a good one. Yes. To, you know, to be extra prepared, to be the best. Great. What a lovely um, compilation I've got. I've got more idioms for, from you guys than I could have taught you. Brilliant. It's, it's you, you know, reversed the classroom. I love it. Give it your best shot. Very good. Give it your best shot. Perform the best. Oh, that was for me, all right. Okay. Uh, to be an underdog, perfect, yes. Um, it can be used in the context of a sport. Hit below the belt, yes. To, um, to say, a, to make a comment which isn't, which is a little personal, which isn't gentlemanly, so yeah. Uh, Busy as a bee. Okay, but busy as a bee has nothing to do with sports. Play on the front foot. Okay. 
to be the front runner, all right. Hit it out of the stadium, yes. All right. Get the ball rolling, yes. Oh my God, so the wait is over everyone. All right, so the wait is over. Hello, sir, can you hear me? I'm afraid you're muted. Uh, how's that? Oh, yes, perfect. Okay, wonderful. All right, so I think we can officially begin the session. Yeah, let's do it. Apologies, I was late, I had to do this stuff with the cricket. Not, not a problem at all. All right, so my name is Deeksha, sir, and I'll be with you throughout the session today. Hi, Deeksha, how are you? So hello and welcome to a special masterclass for Leap Scholar. My name is Deeksha and my guest today has been widely acclaimed for his bowling prowess. And in a minute's time, I will be talking to him about it. But that's not the only reason why he's a fascinating person. He's one of those rare breed of stars who has a passion for doing good, who makes excellent music and women seem to swoon over him. And that raises the question, what is he like behind the exceptionally fast bowling, the clipped Australian accent, and the irresistible charm that doesn't seem to end? Let's see if he reveals the answers today, ladies and gentlemen, as I introduce you to our cricketing legend, Sir Brett Lee. Hello, sir. How have you been doing? Hello, Diksha. How are you? Nice to see you. Same here, sir. So wonderful to be sharing the space with you. Uh -huh. Three days in a week, sir. I hope you're not bored of us. No, not at all. Look, it's been um, it's been a great couple of days. I've really, really enjoyed the um, interactions and conversations that we've had. So it's been, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you. Wonderful, sir, because our students, they're equally excited and their fervor has not died out. And let me quantify that for you. So this is the third of our uh, series, third day. And uh, we still have 700, uh, around 700 students and still counting. And they're so wow. excited to be here. It's amazing. It's a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, that, certainly. That's a phrase you'd hear a lot in India, anywhere you Yes. Go. All right. <laughs> so, uh, since so many of our students are joining us for the first time, sir, uh, let me quickly introduce uh, our IELTS course uh, to them. So, please allow me a moment. And I'm going to quickly just introduce our course. Sure. All right. So as I said earlier, um, we at Leap Scholar are trying to democratize, uh, you know, quality education. So our IELTS courses are specially designed to be good on three special pillars. One is that they are the most economical uh, courses you can get in India right now. Um, you, you can get them for absolutely free, zero rupees. So just click on the link that Soumya has shared with you and you'd be able to join our course. Uh, it's hassle-free, it's just one link and it's the fastest way to crack your IELTS. We have weekend batches, um, two week batches and also four week courses. Now, moving forward today, we are going to look at the IELTS uh, exam, the listening module and of course, since I have Sir Brett Lee with me, who is a native level speaker with a very crisp and excellent enunciation, I will be utilizing you for this activity, sir. So while I speak to him, please take notes. We'll be doing this conversation and you need to take notes. These are the questions that you need to answer. Here you can see the questions and do take a screenshot of them. Uh, the word count is no more than three words or a number. So please listen carefully and write the word as it is, the word that Servret uses. You need to just copy it as it is. Please do not change uh, the word at all and make sure your spelling is correct as well. All right. Okay, sir. So I will be, of course, utilizing you for my activity. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's begin with the un-Indian. Uh, you've done the Bollywood movie and you played the role of uh, an English teacher. Um, mm. I wanted to know, did you 
shadow someone or do something um, how did you prepare for it or did you just spontaneously go for it no nah, look obviously when i was asked to play the lead actor which is <laughs> crazy when you think about i've never been in a film in my life i've i've done a lot of commercials but i've never actually been an actor per se so um i read up a lot about the script i understood the um the sort of dialogue what they wanted to achieve from the movie and then i had to become what they call a method actor you know i wanted to make sure that i understood exactly who will henderson was what his background was uh what we're trying to achieve through the movie so when i went on set the first thing they would call me was will i was never brett or binger i was always will so i then had to become this person so you evolve over the next 3 months as this different person which is quite strange and quite weird but also a lot of fun and that was the best way that I I took that um that project that you know that was in front of me and that was a very interesting character i loved the uh, character of the uh, english teacher very cool um, thank you yeah it w- it was a lot of fun it, w- it was very very enjoyable all right so you've acted in bollywood and you visited us uh our country numerous times so mm. what is that one thing which has kept you anchored to india what has that what is that one thing that kept you coming back again and again look i think it's it's the warmth of the people you know you talk about what is india do for you as a person and amazing opportunity over there in terms of great sporting opportunity amazing business opportunity amazing places to see you know amazing food the culture but it's the people it's the people that keep coming me back and it's the people that allow me to enjoy being a farangi in your country and 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 coming back to you know your beautiful land so i i'm honored i'm truly honored to be to be known as a you know an Aussie guy that comes over that's welcome into your country and i've actually just received this is hot off the press i've just received a personal letter from the honorable um pm mr modi sir to to say thank you for everything that i've done for um your country and also for australia and that was in conjunction with australia day and um the republic day back in india so yeah that that was a huge honor that just came across my desk about um 24 hours ago Wow that is so amazing unbelievable mm. that's a great uh, but you deserve all the praise and the appreciation you really have uh, done so much uh, for our country you even donated uh, during the pandemic so you deserve every uh, thank you the love that you get all right thank so, you very much uh, now that you we know that you love india so much which city is uh, the one which stole your heart <laughs> that's too hard to answer that's that's like that's like asking which one's your favorite child it's look i love i love mumbai mumbai is probably the the hub of where i i spend most of my time um but i spend a lot of time also up in the the punjab community up north uh i spent a lot of time in kolkata when i was playing there for kkr but i also love going down south i love the communities down south a lot i lo- love get down to kerala I love get down to trivandrum those places right down south um beautiful part of the world so yeah i'm not going to go and say mumbai is better than delhi or delhi is better than dharamshala or dharamshala is better than trivandrum you know or goa india period is a beautiful country definitely the punjabi inside me is doing bhangra so all right the correct and i'm 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 hearing i'm reading all these comments haryana hyderabad um people are certainly enjoying it so yeah it, it's it's a great part to um to 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 visit india definitely yes many of our students are from punjab sir and uh, many of our students want to study in australia so is there mm. any hidden spot that you would recommend to them well first see sashri kal hanji sashri um it's you know there's 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 a lot of different places where you can come to australia and study you know the one thing i will say about the australian culture is that we welcome everyone but in particular 
the Australian culture love Indian people. You know, we've got a huge Indian community in Australia. I'm based in Sydney when I'm back home and we have a huge um, multicultural um, collaboration of different students from around the world, but in particular India. And so I'm very biased in saying you've got to come to Australia, come, come to Sydney and, and try all, all the different um, sports. You know, we have obviously cricket, we've got football, we've got baseball, we've got soccer, we've got so many different options that they can play if they, if they enjoy playing sport. All right. Um, continuing the discussion about uh, Oz, sir, the accent is uh, one of um, the troubling areas for students. So uh, if they were to practice that, what series would you recommend, something that you like watching? Look, I think it's, you know, when you talk about the accent, and it's the same when I go to India, like I, I actually find the Indian accent now very easy to understand, whereas my friends that haven't had the chance to understand the way that different countries articulate, um, you know, the different language, it can take a while to get used to. But maybe just watch some, a cup, you know, a few Australian films, maybe watch the cricket, watch Fox Sports, watch the Big Bash, listen to the way the commentators talk. So that's, that's you know, probably the easiest way to understand how the Aussies speak and what they're trying to articulate. Right. Um, now, we definitely know that you are a fitness enthusiast, uh, but the next mm -hmm. thing I want to know is, uh, is there a snack which is like a guilty pleasure that you just cannot resist? Chocolate. I mean, which person doesn't love chocolate? If you don't like chocolate, well, then you're not living. Okay. And uh, final question, sir. How were you during your high school years? Look, I, I was a good student. I tried my hardest. Um, you know, I was never... Uh, ducks the school but both my brothers um, so my older brothers been both have been to university and my younger brother was ducks of the school actually so he went into forensic accountancy very smart smart kid um, my older brothers um, done sports psychology uh, I always say that the degrees that I've achieved in in life are um, 15 degrees when I bowl <laughs> But, you know, I, I, was always, I was always a student that tried very, very hard and I, I, I passed everything and I was very happy with my academic sort of route. But to me, it was always sport. Sport came a lot easier. And obviously with cricket, I, would do, I, I did my HSC and then went straight into cricket and then that's, that's been it ever since. All right. So would you call yourself a, a reserved child or were you outspoken, chirpy? How were you in, uh, when, when you were I was quite I was quite shy actually yeah I was quite shy as a kid um, shy but this undercurrent or underlying feeling of success I wanted to achieve and and the way I went about my business was to to train super hard to to train harder than anybody else to do things that people weren't doing so the easy option in life is to copy everybody else and, and mimic and be like a sheep. Whereas I was like, oh, I actually want to be more of a trendsetter. I actually want to do my own things. I, you know, I want to achieve things that no one else has ever done. So the way that I trained, I trained differently. I trained smarter. I trained harder. And, and hopefully I achieve more than most people. Clearly, yes. Um, so yes, uh, you spoke about in the last two masterclasses that uh, you always knew that you wanted to be a cricketer. You decided that when you were nine, uh, that mm. was great. But nowadays, a lot of students have um, faced this problem of not being able to find their metier. How do how would you uh, you know help them? How, what can you suggest? How how do they find their passion? Well, firstly, Aram say Aram say right. They just go like relax and take their time. Because when you're between the age of 17 and 25, you don't really know what you want to do in life. You know, you're so young and so green and so not immature, but you're actually, you know, you're at the age that you are because you haven't experienced what life has got to throw at you yet, which is great. And that's all part of it. So, you know, when you're 18, you know, you might want to be an accountant. When you're 19, you might want to be, um, something different and that's fine but as long as you commit yourself to whatever you do 
you do 100%. Um, don't, don't be in a rush. Life isn't about being in a rush. Life is short, but also take your time to understand what you want to achieve. And I've, I've sort of found that's the best way to go about things because I'm 45 years of age now and there's still so many things that I want to achieve. You know, there's, there's, there's still so many things that I want to do and I still don't quite know what I want to do for the rest of my life. Like I'm in love with my commentary and stuff, but even at 45, I'm still searching for what makes me the human or the person that I want to be. So when you're 18, don't stress, don't worry if you don't understand fully where you think that your life will take you. Just keep working hard. And if you work hard and, and try 100%, well, then you know you're going to get it into a much better position to be successful. Definitely. Sometimes it's just best, better to not uh, know. It's okay if you don't know it, everything. Yeah, correct. All right. So um, that was an end to our conversation. Now we got a lot of responses. Everybody, you have one final minute to send in your six answers. Please send your uh -huh. answers. And my team is going to collate and check uh, whether, whether, you know, who's won, uh, who's the lucky winner. Uh, so till that time, um, so we noticed that you speak fluent English, uh, sorry, you speak fluent Hindi, you know, a lot of words, which is not fluent, <laughs> <laughs> quite, quite close, which is very impressive. Uh, so today I'm going to be quizzing you, but you can uh, rest assured it's not on Hindi. I'm going to be quizzing you on your Indian English. So I'm going to check your knowledge of some Indian slangs, Indianisms. Uh, are you ready, sure. sir? I'll do my best. All right. Let's see. I, you, I think you seem very confident. All right. Let me try uh, some difficult ones. Uh, so the first phrase is uh, a tube light. Say it again, please. Tube light. Can you spell it for me? All right. Uh, T-U-B-E-L-I-G-H-T. Tube light. Yes. I've never heard that in my life, unfortunately. All right, could you Please. guess what, what could it mean in Indian slang? If somebody Chip. is a tube light. Um, maybe someone that has got a, a bright future. Um, quite contrary. Well, it's someone who is very slow, especially when it comes to understanding jokes. Oh, really? Yes. So we, we actually use... So someone that is a bit wet behind the ears, that's, that's Australian slang. So if someone's wet behind the ears, okay. it means that they don't understand. It go, goes over their head. Or, yes, exactly. All right. Yeah. Okay. So I also learned something new today. Okay. The next one is mugging. Well, mugging in Australia or Australianisms, are mm -hmm. someone that, to take something off someone un, unwillingly. Yes. But can you guess what it means here? Uh, I don't know what it means, but if I was to have a guess, mugging, um, I don't know. Mugging could be, let me have a look. I'm not sure. All right. So when you're rote learning or cramming before an exam, when you just read a lot uh, before your exam, so that's cramming. Are you cramming? Yes. Right. Okay. Mugging is cramming. Okay. okay. So there's, I'm sure in Australia, there's a lot of mugging that goes on. A lot of cramming. I can assure you, not more than India. <laughs> okay. The next one is pass out. Pass out. Well, pass out in Australia means to, to faint. It means to lose consciousness. Pass out could also mean in, in India could be to, to not turn up to class. Um. Contrary, it's when you graduate, they say you've passed out of college. Really? Yes. That's crazy. Probably because there's so much drinking and fainting happening. Could be. <laughs> I like that. That's, okay. that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, the next one is um, pre-pone. Can you spell that for me? Uh, pre-pone. P-R-E-P-O-N-E. Pre-pone. Um... Not sure. There's there's a lot of people. I'm, I'm trying to read some of the comments. Is it the date before? Yes, exactly. So it's the opposite of postpone. So if you're postponing, yes. it's you know when you're advancing yeah. the meeting, 
that. Yep. There you go. I got one right. Okay. And the last one is uh, Dickie. Dickie? Yes. I'm not willing to answer this. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's, it's a part of the car. So the, the rear part, the boot where you keep your stuff, we call that the Dickie. Okay. This is too weird. All right. We call that, the boot. Yes. The boot, exactly. Yes, the boot. So with that, we call, yes, sorry. The trunk. The trunk, as I say, in America. Yeah, we have our own special words for everything. Never heard of it being called a dickie before, but anyway, there you go. That's quite fun. Okay, so with that, we come to the end of this segment. And uh, I'm quickly going to share the answers um, of the first activity. Uh, here you go. So those were the answers. Um, the first one, you can either, even if you've written warmth or opportunities, both would be correct. Second is, uh, unfortunately, Mumbai. Uh, then Sydney is the city that he recommended. Um, at weekends, Brett recommended you watch, so uh, he'd probably be watching films. Um, his guilty pleasure being chocolate and uh, he was shy during his high school years. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, so Soumya, could you please uh, um, announce the lucky winners? Yes, uh, sure, ma'am. Actually, I'll be announcing the winners in another one or two minutes. But for now, uh, we have a lot of people who are interested to talk to Brettley, sir, and who have a lot of questions for sir. So maybe we can call one or two of them and we sure. can take up some questions. Yeah. Sure. So sure. Uh, yes. first of all, we have Radhika with us. Hello. Hey, Radhika, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Uh, but I can't with start my video. Uh, so you'll have to help me there. Hi, Bretty. So I'm so excited to finally uh, see you and interact with you. Hey, Hi, sir. So. How are you? I am well. How are you? Good. Thank you. What is your so, question? Sir, as, so as a counseling psychologist in India, I would like to ask you a question regarding mental health. And I would like to know that how, as a cricketer, as a very famous cricketer, when you were at your peak, how did you cope with the low points of your life or what strategies did you indulge in to cope up with uh, your failure that you experienced in life or any other sad yeah. moment? Look, that's, that's, that's a very, very good question because, um, you know, in, in life, in sport, in business, everyone will have setbacks but it's actually how you deal with those setbacks or those losses or those um, achievements that you thought you would achieve, but they don't actually um, come through to whatever it might be. So the way that I dealt with them is if you commit to yourself in terms of being the, like if, if you can look yourself in the mirror and say, I've tried my hardest, but, there are times where your hardest won't allow you to achieve something. That's fine. You know, it doesn't mean that you failed. It means that you haven't achieved that goal on that particular day, but you'll get, you'll get one more go at it. You know, you'll get other opportunities. So I've always made sure that if for some reason I'm, I'm buying the last over and they hit the winning runs, but I know that I've done everything that I possibly could to, to make sure that we win the match. But for whatever reason, it doesn't happen. You don't get too down on yourself and you find a way to take a positive out of a negative. And that's probably the big thing that you can take away here is that learn from the things you've done wrong, understand the reason why you may have failed, but failing is okay, provided that you learn from it. And that's probably the best thing. Thank you so much, sir. It was very insightful. It was Good so lovely. Study. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Yes. Um, now, ma'am, I think we can call Navneet. Navneet is also here. Um, hey, Navneet, please go ahead. Ask your question. Um, uh, good afternoon, sir. Hi, Navneet. How are you, buddy? Uh, I'm fine. Uh, how about you? Um, so, 
sir you said uh, you like kerala right yes kerala is lovely i'm from trivandrum are you yeah it looks like hawaii with all the palm trees down down south yeah <laughs> so nice. yeah so like before uh, like before i want to ask a question i want to like show you something sure like i have like this bat with me kookaburra <laughs> very good perfect because like we used to bat with kookaburra back in those days yes many many years ago yeah. i was born para yeah yeah i know you used to, like a kookaburra beast but i don't i didn't get that one that's why i brought this i wanted just that, that bat just get a market pen and write beast on it yeah i'll do it <laughs> right so like so my question to you is uh, like how uh, have you adjusted yourself like in case of uh, like last minute changes in your responsibility like uh, my this question came to my mind like uh, when i was preparing um, for your questions so uh, while i was preparing the uh, like the incident that came to my mind was the 2005 um, ashes so particularly the second test because like before 70 like before 75 minutes of the match like magrath got injured and like you were assigned to be the spearhead of the osis bowling attack so how was it like how have you adjusted yourself um, in case of the last minute changes in uh, responsibility yeah look it's a good question and probably the the best way to explain um my answer is that you have to be ready for any opportunity that's thrown your way so even though that you might think that uh you're taking the second over you've got the other guy that's experienced bowl that will take the first over and you can have the whole day planned out it doesn't always go that that way you know you might think that okay you're second guest speaker today you have to get up and you're you're going to co-host and then all of a sudden the host is late or he or she's running behind schedule and then you have to then host the whole thing so you've got to be prepared for everything so preparation's the key but also to grab that experience like that's the occasion where you have to stand up as a person and stand up as a human and you you like live your life by those little moments those pressing moments are what can make you or break you as a person and you have to embrace it and go for it okay sir thank you nice to meet you. Uh, he, yeah nice to meet you too sir thank you much on oh thank you you're welcome <laughs> So I think so you realized that there's nothing more that Indians like than seeing a foreigner speak to them in their own language. <laughs> I try. Tora tora. It's very good. Uh so yes Somi I believe you have the winners. Ah uh, yes ma'am. So the first winner is Muskan. Also she's really really excited to ask a question to Bradley sir. So yes hey Muskan we are giving you this chance to talk to sir. Hello Can Muskan. Good afternoon sir. Hi Muskan, how are you? I'm fine, my video. I can't see you. Where are you? That's Muskan, okay. Please. You, yeah. You can start with your question. I'm so, uh, sir, I'm from Punjab. Sashrikal? Sashrikal sir. Um, I can't find my video on. Can you please help me? Uh, now could you try uh, Muskan? Ma'am, please send it again. I did. Ah, uh, Muskan, can you please go ahead with your question? Uh, 
um all right i think she's unable to unmute um yes ma'am yeah please please ask your question muskan Ma'am, my video is not getting. Could we have the second person uh, while yeah. she goes out the window? Um. So I think we have Piyush with us now. Um. Hey, Piyush. Hey, Piyush. Can you unmute yourself? Hello. You sure are not audible. <laughs> okay, I think people are finding it difficult to unmute. <laughs> hey, Rakshit, can you unmute yourself? If anyone can unmute, ask a question. Go for it. Yeah. Hello, sir. Here we go. Who was the last over match, and it was fantastic. Thanks, mate. It was fun last night. Yeah. That's it. I don't know anything what to say. I had recently <laughs> joined. Uh, yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, look. Thank, thank you. Um, yeah. Look, I think on on last night it was very very exciting for me to be back in the field and playing again. You know, I've been. Up in the commentary box the last five years, so to get out and to bowl again was very, very exciting. So thank you so much. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And at at your this age, the bowling, uh, the speed of the bowling and everything was, uh, I I mean uh, I was embracing the old times when you used to bowl for the PKR. Yeah, that was a while ago, but thank you. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. So, thank you, sir. Have a nice day. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Yes. Uh, so, so Indians are very patriotic, and uh, they always ha face this dilemma, uh, wherein you know they love you and they love your bowling and they love to watch you, but then at the same time, uh, you've led to India losing so many times that they struggle. They do not know what to choose. They are <laughs> probably the only thing which has shaken our patriotism. We like you despite all of our losses. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay, Somya. Anybody else? Do we have? Ah, uh, ma'am, I think we can go ahead with the second game. Okay, sure. So we have uh, another game, sir. Uh, today we are. Uh, so the students will have a chance to learn some idioms uh, about sports, but uh, we won't be giving anything so easily. So uh, they have to guess the idiom uh, themselves. So uh, again, this is another chance for you to speak to sir again. So there are eight idioms. If you guess all of them. you get a chance to talk to him so everybody put your thinking caps on and uh, here's the first one so all right can you guess it everyone let me see your comments ah uh, hasan no very good sushant you're very close perfect so kostum has guessed it what about the others ah uh, think about what the what the switch says um okay yes all right a lot of you guessed the first word great perfect good job done everyone i think almost everybody's got it just another 10 seconds for everyone so think about it what the, what is this thing doing no it that's not hitting perfect all right very good good job done a lot of you So, would you like to disclose? Uh, have you have you guessed the answer? Me. Yes, sir. Oh, there's there's a couple. Of, I'm trying to work out what that middle. It looks like a wet wicket, is it? On a wet wicket. Um, sticky. So yes, very close. On a sticky wicket. I couldn't work out whether it was glue or whether it was pani. <laughs> All right. Yes, which means when you're in a difficult or awkward situation. Uh, so, for example. when i asked sir the question and he didn't know the answer he was put on a sticky wicket i was put on a sticky wicket exactly okay the next one there you go this is a 
tough one. Think about it. Ah, uh, Lucifer, no, there's no wicket in this one. On, no, that's not on. Very good, Chavda's guessed it, perfect. A thumb, no, think about what the thumb sign means. Mm, yes, great, second word, a lot of you have guessed it. Think about what this means uh, when we do this. Uh, best, all right, what else? Uh, keep it up, no. All right, great. A few of us have guessed it. Uh, what about you, sir? Have you guessed it yet? <laughs> All right, should we reveal the answer? All right. So it's to have a good innings, especially used uh, to talk about somebody who's passed away so you can say they had or they enjoyed a good innings. All right, the third one. Super easy. Hmm. Hopper, okay. Uh, what else do you call a grasshopper? <laughs> no, not a beetle. <laughs> not a locust. Maybe a cricket. Exactly. So that's exactly what this to be uh, cricket, usually used in the negative. So for example, was not cricket. It means it wasn't fair. All right, we have the next one. This is what happened to me last night. Yep, someone's got it right. Yep. Oh, perfect. Somebody's, uh, yes. A lot of them have figured all of them out. Oh, yep. Very good. Very good. All right. What's the answer? So it is to hit someone for a six. Yep. To surprise or shock someone. All right, and let's move to the next one. Perfect, so we've guessed the second word. What about the first word? Uh, so yes, sir is there, but what is he doing? What is he doing in the, uh, in the picture? Very good. Excellent. So yes, it is to be bowled over, which means when you're very astonished or when you're just left speechless. So for example, um, I was bowled over by the good news. All right. Okay, next one. Perfect, Krisht. Uh, no, that's not a pencil. Think about, okay. I apologize if it isn't clear. Uh, think about it in cricket uh, terms. A wicket, uh, okay, that's just one. What is the one um, uh, wooden part of the wicket called? Uh, no, not a stoke. Perfect, very good. Excellent, so that's to be stumped. And it means when you do not know or do not um, have a solution to a problem, when you're again uh, shocked and without a solution. All right, and that brings us to the last one. Um, okay, all right, not, not the last, the second last one. Perfect, Salman. Excellent.
all right this was easy great a lot of you have guessed it so it's to catch someone out which means to outwit someone or if you find someone's mistake it's you've got them out great and now yes finally the last one a little funny yes oh wow kostav that was brilliant perfect yeah. that off one's own bat which means to do something of your own accord of your own free will nobody forces you to do it and you go ahead and do it independently all right excellent job done uh, everyone great number of responses uh, somya again could you um, tell us who the lucky winners for this round are yes so uh, the first one is navya jain congratulations hey, Yes, congratulations, and we have unmuted you. You can ask any question from Bradley. So yeah, Definitely. go ahead. Definitely, and I'm gonna need a little help with the video as well. But of course. Um. Hi, hello, sir. Um, my father. Hello, sir. My father is a big cricket cricket fanatic and a huge fan of yours. and uh, you were an amazing player and everyone and my father he used to bowl in his school days so he always looked up to you and he would say that you were a classic bowler and i we all love you in our family everyone and so my question is which life do you like more when you were on the field playing every day or the one that do you have now oh look thank you um both both have been incredible you know i've i've enjoyed um i guess my cricketing life and being out there in front of the crowd in front of the media but i also to enjoy working for the media you know i enjoy doing the commentary and watching the young guys come through so um i think i've got the right balance of both but it was exciting when i was out there playing definitely we all felt very excited when you were back there playing and uh yeah thank you sir thank you so much nice to meet you up to milky good boy thank you all right great um so we have some someone who's very eager to meet you um we have uh, someone from our own faculty we have our, our teacher um namita who's joined us and uh, you know she would love to speak to you for a minute uh somya could we have Nam uh, namita hi somya hi hi diksha hi brad hi namita how are you uh, i'm afraid uh, i think she's got logged out Yes, yes, she's here again. Hello, Namita, ma'am. Yeah, my video. Yeah. Hi. Hi. So it's my pleasure sharing the screen with you. Uh, before moving on, I would just like to share an experience. Um, so it uh, it is like it is over ten to fifteen years. There were Bradley's picture in my room everywhere. so i am your huge fan and um, i always wanted to go to australia i thought that reaching the destination i will get to see you meet you and uh, at the airport or on the road so so it's my great day today so meeting you. you sitting here talking to you so that is what i would like to tell my students so it's not like that that dreams don't come true please see me so if it can happen with me then with you as well you just need to shoot for the stars and aim for the moon guys just believe in yourself and nothing is unachievable okay just just work hard so that's what so brett i would like to ask you few questions sure yeah so what do you think like having dream or setting a goal is important for our young generation Yeah, look, I think it's important to have a goal because if you set yourself a goal, you know you know where you want to end up. So you have to have an 
an exit strategy. You have to have an end, an end goal. So if that goal is to play for your country or that goal is to be um, a person who's, um, you know, a medical student or a person who wants to be a doctor or a person who wants to be a, someone in finance, whatever you want to do, set yourself a goal because then you can actually try to work on how then you try to achieve that goal. Okay. So uh, next question would be, so when you were 18, 19 or 20 years old, so was there any dream you wanted to achieve, you wanted to fulfill and you really worked hard? Yeah, well, my my dream started when I was nine and that was to play for my country. And it started at nine, 18, 19, 20 years of age. I was closer to that dream. And then when I was 22, 23, I achieved that dream. So hard work does pay off work really hard, um, be, be trustful, be truthful, be understanding, be okay to fail as long as you learn from it. And they're, and they're all the things that held me in very, very good stead in my career. And what do you believe? Like, do luck matters or it's only hard work? No, you actually make your own luck. So the harder you train and the harder that you prepare, the luckier you become. So any other suggestion for our students? Keep smiling, have fun, be true to yourself, and just know yeah. that the you know your students have been given this wonderful opportunity. Mm -hmm. So so make the most of it. Okay, so sir, last question. Okay, uh, so it's my like students wanted to hear my name, so I would like you to pronounce my name. <laughs> so it's uh, so it's Namita Jaswal. Namita Jaswal, Absimilki Kushihoi. Uh, 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 it's the same here. And yes, thank you so much. Thank you, Diksha. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. All right, great. Uh, yes, Samya, can we have the winners now, please? Yes, ma'am. So uh, we have Mohil here. He wants. He really wants to talk to Petli, sir. So hey, Mohil, can you unmute yourself? Hey, Morgan. Hello. Hey, buddy, how are you? I'm fine, sir. Uh, my father is a huge fan of you. <laughs> so I just wanted to talk and then regard this so I can show this to my father. Okay. <laughs> so, can Bye. you pronounce my I'll name? Hello, how is your dad? Yeah, th thank you. Can you pronounce my name? Can you say it for me and I'll try? Mohil. Mohil. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, mate. You take care. Ma'am, I think we can call up two, three more people because there are many students who are really interested. So uh, next, I think we can call Lucifer. Um, okay. He's very active in the chat box and he's really interacting. So oh, yes. Hey, Lucifer. Hi, sir. Hi, ma'am. Hey, Lucifer. How are you? Good, sir. What about you? Badia. Sir, what's your favorite memory regarding the Ashes, sir? Well, um, I've got some great memories, but um, a couple of good memories were, you know, playing in 2005. And even though that we didn't win the series, the way that it was played, the, the sportsmanship that was shown, teams, and that's, that's the greatest thing about sport. You don't have to win the match to enjoy it. As long as it's fought hard and you play really hard and that, you, you know, you enjoy doing it, that's what life's about. Okay. So, was it easy to bowl to ABD Lutz or it was tough to bowl to him? Always tough. Always tough. tough. You know, like, there are a, lot of, a lot of great players around the world. Exactly. He's a 360-degree he's a player. He's very tough to bowl to. Yeah. So, any memory alongside with him? Yeah, he's a he's he's a guy that enjoys to sing, play the guitar. So I, I love that. As well. What about Bass, sir? Pardon? Bass, Bass, Brendan McClum. Bass, Bass is a, Bass is a great guy, a very good golfer too. He is golfer and a bit uh, fiery too. Exactly. Well done, mate. Thank you. Thank you, you sir.
All right. Okay. So you must have seen uh, the obsession, sir, that Indians have with uh, listening to their own name just because it's from <laughs> your mouth. All right. So uh, could we um, end the session on a very beautiful note? Is it possible for you to just sing uh, one or two lines from any of your uh, songs? Or, uh, oh, all right. Okay. I'm, just I'm at Tamara Hun Tamari Rahunga. There you go. How's that? All right. Yes, I, I remember that's your song with uh, Asha, ma'am. Yeah. One. Now, look, I think... Uh, I think in all seriousness, it's to finish off the session, I'll leave you with some parting words, um, Deeksha, which obviously all, all the students can hopefully take something from it. But life is about having life is about having fun. So I think I lost you there for a second. Oh, I think I'm back. Yeah. Life, life is about having fun and life is about enjoyment. And when you can, can combine the enjoyment and the fun, with respect and commitment that makes you become the, the person that you are so if if you can look yourself in the mirror the mirror in in in, in the morning and go i'm going to give it a hard crack today i'm going to try my hardest i'm going to succeed and you back yourself that's what makes you the person that you are so you will have ups and downs in life now life isn't perfect no one goes through their life with no downs there's always ups there's always downs but it's how you deal with those downs and how you embrace those ups so there is also no substitute for hard work nothing comes easy nothing comes free you got to work really, really hard but if you work hard and you enjoy what you're doing the chances are you will be successful so i want to wish all the students the very, very best of luck keep working on your aussie slang and you're always welcome to my beautiful country. And I want to thank you for allowing me to, to spend some time to chat to you today. And also thank you for your hospitality. Thank you so much, sir. I couldn't agree more with you. That was a very scintillating conversation. Uh, a huge round of applause for Sir Brent Lee for joining us. I hope to see you very soon in one of our master classes again. That was the end of our third final master class uh, for this week. Thank you so much, sir, for being here with us. Thank you, Diksha, and thank you to everyone that's um, listened in and have a, have a wonderful weekend and please be safe. Wear a mask. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for the, to the tech team as well who's been behind the scenes. Yes. Thank you, sir. I'm sending you a lot of love and warmth from India all the way. Bye-bye. Done. Lots of love back. Bye-bye.